Welcome back to the Front Seat Vlog. Nahi Gordon here, and I am on my way to Art Scroll headquarters. Did you know that they are open 24 hours a day? Well, you're about to see a lot more about them, so stay tuned. I'm getting a tour right now from Rabbi Yitzhak Hissiger and Aaron Hendler. He's joining us along this tour and uh, we're about to step into the Art Scroll warehouse where they are printing Gemara Sfarim books 24 hours a day. That's 24 hours. So when you're sleeping, they're not sleeping, they're printing. So let's go take a look. If you look here, this is 1,500 pounds on um, paper. So you lift this in the gym, no? 1,500 pounds? Oh wow, that's this is like, heavy. That's like 8,000 pounds of paper. Wow, and this paper, this paper is what's on our bookshelves. That's it, so it comes out of here. Each roll looks something like this, and it gets attached to one of those printers there. Right, I just came across a book here, um, and it's a book of Rav Yitzhak Shiner that they're in the middle of putting together. And something that's so amazing is that you see Rosh Shiva and you think, oh, maybe his life was the life of Rosh Shiva from, from, you know, from a child. And it, that, that was his destiny. But Rav Yitzhak Shiner was in public school until he was 16 years old. Now look what's going on here. Never too late. It's never too late to turn your life around. It's never too late to make a difference in Kalal Yisrael. Here's another fascinating thing. Many people don't realize that the material that we use for the covers come on a roll like this, you look behind me, the rolls and rolls and rolls of this type of vinyl material. You can tell this is going to be an art school Gemara one day. And this is the Mishnayis and so on and Emirza so forth. Emirza Hashem by you, Emirza Hashem. Emirza <laughs> exactly, well said. Oh, I do miss you, miss you. We have high schoolers, high schoolers, first time they're learning with Torah Lishma. First time they never did it before. So you do you do Mishnah Yomi every day? Mishnah Yomi every day. Kids do Mishnah Yomi every day. You see, you walk around in high schools or any any schools, even outside of school, you'll see the kids opening up little right, pockets. Let me ask you something. How's um how's Paya going with Mishnah Yomi? Paya is good. I started. I learned Paya. Got some Paya. So I have <laughs> everything. It's a little harder than Brachos. A little harder than Brachos, but kids, it's good for them. They like it. It's it's like a. I don't know what's a better word, it's like a gateway drug. Kids, they learn, <laughs> they learn Mishnah Yomi, then after learning Mishnah, they, have, they can't learn a Mishnah without some Gemara. Like Gemara, then you go with Talakha, what do you do? And then you, well, then you, why are you keeping the Mitzvah? So you learn about Amunah, and then Mama shoot. You got Torah Kula just from starting from the Mishnah Yomi. If you're, if you're talking to someone who's like 15 years old right now, and you, one sentence you could tell them to do Mishnah Yomi, what would it be? It's two minutes and it's Torah. It's just so easy. It's like, it's, there's no excuse, as I said before. It's so, no excuse, two minutes a day. Like after two minutes a day, you can sp you're spending online. You're when you're wrapping your film, someone could be saying it to. That's what kids do. And, and like, what what does it do for for you? Those two and when minutes? you learn, and when you learn two minutes, you get appreciation, you get a love for Torah, and you know why you're doing. It. If a person, if a person's not learning why the mitzvot and what his mitzvot are, then he's not keeping mitzvot. He's keeping him in hugging. When you learn mishnayos, that's when you know what you're doing, and you know why you're doing it, and who you're doing it for. So I'm just walking, uh, you know, checking out some books, and what do we what do we uh, fall upon? One of my little children over here. This is the Meaningful Minute book. Written by uh, Sterling Besser, sponsored by the Eisenberger family. It's still here, it's still here. So I'm sitting here in Rabbi Gadai's Lawwood's office, and on the shelf, obviously, a lot of Sarm, um, some Feldheim, and of course, you know, maybe a little bit of Art Scroll. But there was one thing in particular that caught my attention. It was something like this. Looks a little bit old, um, maybe worn out. And these are the notes of of Mayor's Onowitz, who was the founder. He started Art School. He just started writing these notes. On Rashi, Shemesh, you see things crossed out. This was written, these notes were written in the 70s. 
and this. Just look at this. This is insane. And this turns into this. Which is just crazy to think about. You could put all this work in and uh, and this turned into this. All of this. Uh, a big lesson to really learn from this, I think, is humble beginnings. You start out writing in your own handwriting on a notebook and now millions of Jews around the world are learning because of you, because of that. So always remember when you're starting something, you're not going to start at the top. You need to start at the bottom and that's okay. And that's actually a good place to start. Uh, to be honest, I lost everybody and I'm kind of lost right now. This place is huge, okay? Amazing that we have this huge office building warehouse dedicated to creating tour content. Um, so, wow, this is nice, check this out. <laughs> yeah, that's... I'm sitting with a Rigidalis Lottery. The book that changed the world. Oh, the book that changed the world. You know who changed the world? It's Lotto, it's this. I want, I, want, I, want to, I want to discuss that with you. You were, you were 10 years old, you said, when your father started Art Scroll. Um, I saw some you know, notes up here with scribblings and your father just writing notes on Parshas Noach and Rashi. And did you, as a child, like as a 10-year-old, ever think that what was being done then by your father, those nights that he was staying up and working on this vision, this dream, did you ever, ever see it to be what it is now? As a 10 year old, it would be impossible to see what it is now, but the truth is my father didn't see what it is now. He could never have imagined. My father didn't start this ever dreaming that it would become what it was. I think if anyone would have planned this, it would have failed. It why, just, why is that? It's just too, it's too big? I think it was too big. I don't think anyone could have ever imagined how much Torah growth there could be you know, you're going back to the mid-1970s and to go say that there would be tens of thousands of Balabatim who would be spending their evenings learning in a base Medrash, keeping up with Dafyomi, Mishniyomi, or even just any type of learning to say that learning would be the thing you have to do. You say, no, nah, it's impossible. So to go imagine that the world would change this way, anyone who says they thought that, it's hard to believe. My father did this as a chesed for a friend of his who died, and those who know the story know. If not, they could read it or watch it online. But it just evolved step by step. I mean, it's clear when they asked my father, would you ever do a Gemara translation or an elucidation of Gemara? He said, there's no way they'll ever do it. The project's too big. And look today, right? 73 volumes later, not only is there Talmud Bavli, now we have Talmud Yerushalmi. So, it was impossible to imagine. If someone would be sitting here and they have this idea that they want to implement, um, but it's big and it's daunting, like what advice would you give them to sort of take the first step? What would that look like? If someone believed in a dream that they had, I mean, actually we could use you as an example. <laughs> I mean, really, we can, and we know it. We spoke about this in camp. You know, he started with a small idea. If I would tell you today that, if I tell you then that today you would have how many people looking at the Meaningful Minute? Like 12, 12 people. How many thousands? <laughs> Over 30,000 people, right? Yeah. Probably way north of that. You would have said I was crazy. And you're a dreamer, and you're someone who wants to make things happen. But you would have said it's impossible. We'll start it, we'll get a few thousand people and look what it grew into. So what I would tell people is, if you have a dream, and you really sit down and think to yourself, am I doing this for the right reasons? And I'm doing it to bring Kvot Shemayim, to bring you know glory to Hashem's name. Just keep focused on the goal, and it will happen.